Hi, welcome back. This is Dr. G. Uh, this is the third of three videos on the solutions to version A of that second midterm exam. So in this video, we're going to look at just the word problems, 9, 10, and 11. So number nine is two parts. Um, it says that Paul, a dentist, determined that the number of cavities that develops in his patient's mouth each year it varies inversely to the number of seconds spent brushing each night. His patient, Lori, had four cavities when brushing her teeth 30 seconds each night. So um, knowing that it's an inverse variation relation and knowing that uh, Lori had four cavities when she brushed 30 seconds each night, we're supposed to be able to come up with an equation describing the situation. And that's what part A says. Part A says write the equation that relates the number of cavities C to the time T spent brushing. So because we know um, that the number of cavities varies inversely, to the number of seconds, we know that the equation looks like this. C has to be equal to K over T for some real number K. K is called the constant of variation. So now, in order to actually have the, the right equation, we have to figure out what K is. And so we use the information about Lori having four cavities after brushing her teeth 30 seconds each night. So we plug those numbers in for um, C and for T. So we get four cavities is equal to K over 30 seconds. And we solve that. Multiply both sides by 30. And we get that K is 120. So then we can write down our equation as C is equal to 120 over T. So in the answer box, we just need to write uh, 120 over T because C equals is already there. All right, then in part B, it says how many cavities would Paul expect Lori to have if she had brushed her teeth for 120 seconds each night? So we know our equation is C equals 120 over T. So if Lori brushes her teeth for 120 seconds each night, we can plug that in for T, and we get C is equal to 120 over 120, which is one. So he can expect her to have exactly one cavity. All right, let's look at number 10. Number 10 says that Callie is an experienced painter, and she knows that she can paint a small bedroom in eight hours. It says Vince was helping her last week, and together it took them six hours to paint a small bedroom. So we're supposed to figure out how long would it take Vince to paint a room like that all on his own. So we have to define a variable, so we're asked how long, which means time, how long would it take Vince to paint a room? So let's let T represent the time in hours that it would take for Vince to paint a small bedroom. All right. So if T is his time, then we can write down his rate, his rate, his painting rate. So he can paint one room in T hours, means that his rate is one over T room of a room, one T of a room per hour. <laughs> okay, and now what's Callie's rate? Well, we're told that Callie can paint a room in eight hours. So her rate is one eighth of a room per hour. So their combined rate, 
So when they're working together, it says that it took them six hours to paint the room to a room like that together. So their combined rate is one sixth of a room per hour. But we also know that we can get their combined rate by adding their two rates because when they're working together, um, we can add Callie's rate and Vince's rate, or Vince's rate is one over T, Callie's rate is one over eight. And if we add those two, that should be equal to one over six. And so this is a rational equation. And to solve that, we multiply both sides by the at least common denominator, which is 24t. And on the right side, um, part of the 24 cancels with six. We're left with four, 4t. On the left side, we're distributing. So 24t times 1 over t plus 24t times 1 over 8, and that's equal to 4t. So um, 24t times 1 over t, the t's cancel. 24t times 1 over 8, the 8 cancels with part of the 24. So we're left with 24 plus 3t is equal to 4t. Now, if you subtract 3t from both sides, you end up with 24 is equal to t. So, poor Vince, it takes him 24 hours to paint a room like that all by himself. Callie can do it in eight hours, and it takes Vince three times as long. Okay, well, Callie's the experienced painter. Vince is less experienced. All right, let's look at number 11. It says, Jenny needs to get to her grandmother's house by taking an airplane and a rental car. She travels 900 miles by plane and 250 miles by car. The plane travels 250 miles per hour faster than the car. If she drives the rental car for two hours more, then she rode the plane, find the speed of the plane. So right away we know what our variable is going to represent. It's going to represent the speed of the plane. So let's uh, let S be the speed of the plane, and that's going to be in miles per hour. Now we're going to set up a table to organize our work. So we've got two parts of her trip, the airplane part and the rental car part. And we're going to use distance, rate, and time for each of those parts of her trip. So the distance that she traveled on the airplane was 900 miles and she went 250 miles by car. Her rate in the airplane, we said, was S, right? And now what was her rate in the rental car? It says that um, the plane was 250 miles per hour faster than the car. So the car was slower, 250 miles per hour slower than the plane, right? So we can write S minus 250 for the rental car speed, the rate of the rental car. All right, so now in the time column, we're going to use the distance and the rate columns to fill in the time column. And remember an equation that we learned long ago, distance equals rate times time. So if we divide both sides of that equation by R, we get a new equation. Distance divided by rate is equal to time. So to fill in the time column, we're going to use uh, distance divided by rate for each of the boxes in the time column. So for the airplane's time, that's going to be the airplane distance, 900 miles, divided by the airplane speed, S. And then for the rental car time, 
that's going to be the distance, 250, divided by the speed, s minus 250. Okay, so now we've got those filled in. We're going to set up an equation. So what? let's go back and look at the problem. What information have we not used? Well, the last equation says she drives the rental car for two hours more then she rode the plane. So her time in the rental car was two hours more than her time in the plane. So her time in the rental car was 250 over S minus 250. And that's two hours more, so that means it's equal to two plus the speed of, or the time in the plane, 900 over S. Okay, so this is a rational equation, and we can solve it by multiplying, start, start out by multiplying both sides by the least common denominator. So the least common denominator is S times S minus 250. All right, on the left side, the S minus 250s cancel. On the right side, we have to distribute. So on the left, um, I've got 250s, there we go, 250s on the left. On the right, I've got 2 times s times s minus 250 plus uh, 900 over s times s times s minus 250. And notice in that second term, my s's cancel. So then we're left with 250s is equal to 2s squared minus 500s plus 900s minus 225,000. All right, so we're going to get everything on one side, combine all our like terms, and have a zero on the other side. And we end up with 2s squared plus 150s minus 225,000 is equal to zero. And I can divide everything by two. So I get s squared plus 75s minus 112,500 is equal to zero. And that can be factored. It's s plus 375 times s minus 300 equals zero. So the zero product property says S plus 375 is zero or S minus 300 is zero. So the first one says S is negative 375. The second one says S is positive 300. Well, which one makes sense? We're talking about the speed of an airplane. So negative 375 makes no sense. So the speed of the plane must be 300 miles per hour. Okay, and that's the end of version A of the second midterm exam. Version B is very, very similar. I will just post those solutions in written form. Uh, and have a good weekend.